Hey, what's going on? My name's Robert, and you are watching Southpaw Auto Works. This is the 68 RFE. In this video, we share what it takes to get this transmission torn apart. Without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Okay, we got one here for the Dodge and Chrysler guys, the 68 RFE Trans. This is their, uh, one of the larger units they're using behind the uh, diesel engine. Um, got the torque converter over here, a couple little things we just wanna show on the converter because it's kind of unique to Dodge and uh, Honda, a few, few others, where they use a O-ring seal right on the converter hub itself. Something to keep in mind when you're working on one of these and doing your final assembly. You've got to replace that uh, O-ring with a fresh one and make sure, of course, that's lubed up before you install the converter back in the unit. Um, this being a diesel, it does have more mounting pads here where it hooks to the flywheel or flex plate itself. You got the uh, six there where uh, normally on the gasoline engines it's just going to be a four pad or four mount uh, converter itself. This is a lockup converter of course and they do make these in the uh, in the billet where they will take this cover here on the front side of the converter make that out of one solid piece. We've showed you that in some of the other other videos. Uh, very popular option to go with the billet on that uh, when the guys are running the tuners and stuff on the engines, running the horsepower and torque way up and the torque converter clutch or lockup clutch in here tends to slip because this cover will flex or bend under the high horsepower, high torque loads. So make a solid piece to go on there. Uh, pricey, but well worth it to go on your, uh, your diesel trucks when you're pulling all that weight. All right, RFE, we've got a couple of speed sensors here, input and output speed sensors. We'll, we'll pop those out, just take the bolt loose. The linkage I don't normally uh, take off immediately on these. It's not necessary to disassemble like on some of the other Chrysler units. So that'll stay intact. And this of course is your electrical or bulkhead connector where you would connect to the vehicle and the uh, harness itself. We'll take the speed sensors off and then we'll take the adapter. This is four by a course, so it's got the short adapter on the back here rather than the longer housing, which would be two wheel drive. So this adapts your trans to your transfer case. We'll get that off, get the speed sensors off. Uh, Chrysler, by the way, does not use a gasket back here. It's all silicone sealer. So when you go to take these off, um, they can be kind of a bear to get off the back of the unit because of the amount of sealer that's on there. So we'll see just how tight it is once I get the rest of the bolts off of here. All right. We're gonna try a plastic mallet first. See, there, not too bad. Okay, and this does have a large support bearing back here in this uh, adapter housing that fits on that output shaft to help support that kind of beefy, beefy unit there. It does have the rear seal or adapter seal that would seal between the trans and the transfer case. That would of course need to be replaced. Um, only thing we've got to do back here, Robert, get a shot of that snap ring. We've got a little skinny snap ring right there. We've got to get that snap ring off and that's going to allow us to remove the part gear itself, slide that off the uh, output shaft. That will be necessary for disassembly. If we skip over that and go inside, uh, we won't be able to get the uh, planetary gear set out the front of the trans. I didn't pull any pliers. Here we go. <sighs> 
so that's the guy we were needing to remove. Mm, excuse me. Now, the park gear, you can try and get a hold of that right now if you want uh, with a pick or something, a good magnet or two, and that would slide directly off there. Easiest usually just to tip the unit or something and get it to, to slide out, slide out of there for us. Let's take our uh, two speed sensors. These are identical speed sensors, by the way. They can interchange front to back. Those two, like I said, same difference there. Always a good indicator of maybe what damage you might see inside because these will attract the metal that's circulating inside the unit itself. Little little bit on each one of those, but not, not terrible. Okay, the front of this unit's kind of unique in a way also as you don't have a conventional pump or front pump that you can see here and some bolts that you simply take out to remove the pump, you've got this little pump cover plate. It's just a tin stamped plate and it also contains the front seal or converter seal itself. On the earlier units, this seal was not attached to the plate. It was actually attached to the front pump. And on the later units, they changed it. So this is obviously Later, and being a 68, it's going to have that only. It's not going to have it in the uh, pump housing itself. Well, we've got the snap ring outside here. On the earlier units, once again, that had the front seal here, there's an inner snap ring that you would have to remove, as well as the outer snap ring, to get this uh, pump cover plate off. So we've got to find the end of that snap ring and get in behind it and try and pry it out of there. That's the guy that we're needing to remove. Now what we've got to do is basically just flip the unit over because we don't have any real good way. I imagine with a uh, right puller, a seal puller or something, you might be able to come in here and hook this and pull this out. But these do fit fairly tight in here. They've got an O-ring around the outside. And once they've been in there, been weathered for a while, they'll tend to stick. So what I do is flip the unit over and I come in from the inside with a screwdriver to try and knock that plate out. Hopefully not damage it, but sometimes you, you will damage them getting them off there. This one's got the optional black motor oil looking transmission fluid in it. Pretty nasty. Get it redirected. All right, we'll get pan bolts off. Okay. for that hole again. Uh, the pan on this, by the way, from the factory is also sealed just with silicone, no gasket. The aftermarket does have uh, regular gaskets for it. It's up to you which way you want to go on that, obviously. I prefer the gasket just because it's a little less messy and easily, easily serviced. No, oh. the pan off here, magnet. That's uh, pretty thick, looks like about double the size of the original magnet with just the amount of metal that's on there. Let's see that. Okay, another thing, if you haven't seen these before, they're kind of unique on the Chryslers, on the RFE units, whether it's the 45 or 45, uh, 545, 66 RFE, whatever, they all use a dual filter setup. Looks like a regular oil filter right here. That's for the uh, lube circuit on these. 
So they use an additional filter just for that. That spins off like a conventional filter. This, this guy comes off with the, once we remove one Torx bolt. And speaking of which, I did not grab a Torx. Real quick, if this type of content is adding value, please let us know by hitting that like button. It does help the channel and we do greatly appreciate your feedback. So one little bolt there for your filter. And then we should be able to come underneath the uh, filter up here by where it goes in the pump itself. Pry that out. By the way, another note too, these filters were in two different heights or depths. There was one made about half the height of this one and it was a shallower transmission pan that was usually on the earlier units, two wheel drives. Most everything later on, plus four wheel drive, all use the, uh, the deep filter itself. The spin on filter stayed the same, no matter what year or what size unit it is, it uh, stays the same. So as mentioned before about getting this pump plate out or pump cover plate, so what I usually end up doing is trying to get a screwdriver and come in between the pump itself and the case in this little opening, which is not much. And the problem is, is it's just not enough space in there to get something that's this fat through there. It'll just get bound up on you. So either a skinnier one or something that's bent, if you can get her in there, can kind of hear it hitting that plate there. It's just barely catching. It's not a lot of not a lot of room to get to it. And all I do is simply smack on that and watch my cover. And what we've done is knock that loose right out the front. As I mentioned, O-ring seal here. That's what tends to kind of stick into the case itself once it's been on there for a while. And of course the front seal. You can either replace the whole plate or in your overhaul kit, they're gonna give you a new O-ring and a new seal. So it didn't look like I damaged this when I knocked it out of there. So this would be reusable. And if Robert get a shot there, you can kind of see where my screwdriver come through. And that little bit of an access there just to get in there and pop that uh, plate loose. Quite often I damage that plate getting that out of there because it does tend to stick pretty good. Now we've exposed our front pump and we can remove our, what would be kind of a conventional set of pump bolts here. And we'll be able to slide that, uh, that pump right out of there. So we just got a series of 10 millimeter bolts here. And before I pull the last bolts, in play. I had a pair of pliers up here for just that purpose and I almost skipped over it, so. Grab a hold of that input shaft, trying to move it in and out. You can hear it clicking a little bit. I don't think that is actual end play. I think that is simply the input shaft and the little bit that it's moving inside the input drum. We'll take a look at that and see once we get our, our pump and our, our input drum out of there. All right, let's get that screwdriver out of there. Pump should just pretty much pull straight out the front. No need for a uh, pump puller or anything like that. Simply comes right out of there. Had a uh, bearing from that uh, back of the stator shaft itself goes between that and the uh, input drum. Chrysler on this unit uses Oh geez, like a dozen of these bearings. Most of them are all about the same uh, size and shape. Uh, it's nice they don't use much of anything as far as thrust washers, mainly thrust bearings. Makes it a heavier unit, stronger unit. We'll uh, split the pump later. Now input drum, simply just pulls right out of there. You grab a hold of that, just got a lot of weight to it, a lot of size to it. <sighs> And that's going to come right out. 
and this guy has pretty much remained the same from way back. This is actually the same drum we'll show you that they used in their little front wheel drive transmission as far as design. Obviously, it's much beefier, much heavier in a, in a 68. And then they shrunk it a little bit more for the 66 and uh, 45 RFE units. Uh, notice right here, this little ring that's part of that drum. That's your reluctor or speed sensor for the input speed sensor that we pulled out of the uh, outside of the case itself. This has three sets of clutches in it, um, overdrive, underdrive, and a reverse clutch pack, not necessarily in that order. I kind of flipped it over there. Um, we'll go ahead and open up that drum and take a quick look at that. Pretty unique setup that they've got here, and it's worked rather well for them. So here's the one exception where you have a thrust washer it's actually a combination setup kind of here. You've got a plastic surface, uh, surface or phenolic surface here with a bearing built on the back. Okay. This guy is actually available in different thicknesses and that therefore is our uh, in-play control washer. Need parts and tools for your 68 RFE? Be sure and check out the resources section in the video description down below. Okay, so show you how to get this uh, input drum apart. First thing I do is just kind of little tap on this pressure plate here. A few spots around the outside diameter of that. Just tapping on it lightly. It's knocking it down a little bit. And the reason is, is there's a snap ring around the inside right here that we've got to take off. And normally what's happened is that pressure plate has moved up and stayed there, if you will, against that uh, snap ring. Kind of makes it a little easy if you just knock that pressure plate down a little bit. So pocket screwdriver pick or whatever here, we're gonna get this snap ring out first from the inside, as I mentioned. That's a flat snap ring, by the way, because you're gonna see multiple snap rings inside this drum. Gets a little confusing on these as far as building them, what position where they go and which direction they install. This one being just a simple flat snap ring doesn't make any difference. And I'll show you kind of as I go on those. So we've got here's a little hub that'll come out. But what we gotta do is work our pressure plate, the guy that I smacked down to remove the snap ring. Let's go with a little bit bigger screwdriver. And this is gonna be our pressure plate on top here, and that's gonna be for the reverse clutches. Okay? Reverse clutches in this thing look pretty light, if you will, and the reason is, is there's only a total of two frictions and steels in this reverse clutch pack. This one you can see, I'm sure Robert get a shot of that. We've got hot spot, maybe just a single hot spot on there where these clutches were slipping and, and heating up a little bit there. Good indication of it, those clutches were slipping at some point in time. So we've got that pressure plate comes off. One of the reverse frictions. Take this hub here and what it's gonna do is lift. It's got a little notch on it. It's gonna grab the second friction and our other steel. And allow those to come off. Hot spot once again on the uh, steels. Those are going to want to be, we're going to want to replace those for a build. You can zing over those, but they never really disappear, if you will, when you sand them or tumble them. I prefer just to uh, replace with new. So we take that little hub out of the way. Now we've got another pressure plate, another snap ring around the outside this time, another clutch hub in the center, thrust bearing. So what we've got to do is find an end to my snap ring right here and try and get in one of these notches closest to the end of the snap ring. And we get that guy started. Work it around. Right. That's another flat snap ring there goes in. And then we can simply, should be able to lift our pressure plate up out of here. And this is gonna be a combination pressure plate. It's got a plate here where the reverse clutch is set against here, can be used as a, a pressure plate or a ply plate. And then on this side, 
Also a pressure plate, and that's gonna be for your overdrive clutch pack right here. Overdrive on these is usually the big failure. Uh, very common to see that clutch pack failed, not normally the reverse in the, in the underdrives themselves. This is a uh, normally a directional pressure plate, so pay attention to which way this is removed. We've got a number stamped here, which I believe is our thickness. This is selective, and we'll want to make note of that when we reinstall to put that in the proper direction. Now we've got another clutch hub here. We can lift that out, and we've got a set of frictions right here, which are pretty well burned up. Looks like they've been overheated. As a matter of fact, a lot of them just kind of Look like they're kind of stuck together. Burnt. I don't know if Robert can get a good enough shot of that to see the warpage in that friction. That should be flat, but it's it's actually dished. Now it's gotten so hot it's it's become a dish shape. All right, so we've got several of the frictions and steel plates are like I said, they're kind of coming out of here in a mess. Some of them are still stuck actually gotten so warped they're sticking to the uh, hub itself. What we'll end up having to do is actually knock those off. You can see one of the frictions is still stuck on there. Been extremely, extremely hot. You can see the discoloration in the frictions. You can also see it in the discoloration of the hub itself. The hub will probably be fine. Normally, it's not going to do damage to the hub, but we do want to inspect that. Okay, so we've got more clutches down here in the bottom that still have to come out. That's still from our overdrive clutch pack. Still peeling those out. Now, another snap ring and another pressure plate that are down in here. This is probably usually the toughest snap ring to get out. From the factory, it's a tapered snap ring. And when it's installed down into the clutch drum itself, it's usually driven in place or hammered, punched in place. So it can be a very, very tight fit. And I'm noticing right here, looks like a piece of that snap ring is broken off. It was simply laying in the drum there on top of the rest. Stuck to my little pocket magnet there. So the snap ring is broken at some point. Uh, whether it's got multiple pieces in there, I don't know, until we start to get it out of there. That could uh, create even more of a problem because that's the end of the snap ring with the little taper. And normally that's where I would come in with my screwdriver or pick to try and work the, uh, the uh, snap ring out of the drum. So at this point, what we're going to do is try and find an end to the snap ring, a gap in it, if you will, and hammer a screwdriver in, a pick, whatever it takes to get that... Uh, release from the drum. I can see one end of the snap ring here, but I'm not going to be able to get in behind it. We're going to need a pick. Where's a pick at, Robert? I don't think I got one. Okay, so what we're going to do here is, like I said, try and get to that snap ring. We'll get this uh, inner hub and shaft out of the way, simply lifts right out of there. Another bearing, another bearing. So that'll give me a little bit more room to work with down in here. And what I'm going to do is try and actually hammer a pick between the snap ring and the drum. Maybe the only way we can get enough gap to actually be able to get a snap ring or a um, screwdriver in behind it. Got it started, but it came right back off again. There, we got it barely started there. So now we'll just have to work it with one or more screwdrivers, picks, whatever it takes to get that snap ring out of there. As I mentioned, it's a tapered snap ring and it does fit the drum very, very tightly. So I've broken several picks doing these before. Yeah, we get that. If I can get my screwdriver behind it, we'll have it made. There we go. So I've got it started. I'm gonna leave my screwdriver in there so I don't lose it. And it popped back into the groove itself. Where we can get enough of it. There we go. We're in pretty good shape there. So we'll just work around the drum. <coughs> That's it. Snap ring. Very common for that to break. It's tapered flat on the bottom, tapered on the top. 
and uh, will most likely just end up replacing that snap ring either with a brand new one or possibly a aftermarket that might last a little bit longer than that one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, another pressure plate here, dual purpose. Provides a surface here for the overdrive clutches and then provides a surface here for the underdrive clutches. And that is directional, so you didn't want to pay attention on that or get some notes to go by to help you reassemble this in the correct direction. This pressure plate changed uh, probably a dozen times over the years for different heights of the drum, different types of clutches, different thicknesses of clutches. Chrysler did kind of mess with you on that a little bit, so you've got to pay attention when reassembling this this drum as far as uh, direction, snap rings, everything. Can be a little bit, little bit tricky to work with. And speaking of snap rings, directly underneath that pressure plate is another snap ring that we've got to take off. Otherwise we can't remove the rest of the underdrive clutches. So I'm gonna look for an end for that snap ring, which I cannot find. Probably hidden in there somewhere. So I'm gonna start stabbing and see if I can find. Look at that, I got right on the end. Found the end of the snap ring. This is a little lighter snap ring, flat, it's not directional. Simply goes in the groove below the pressure plate and the pressure plate actually rests against that uh, snap ring. And then that tapered snap ring sits on top of this guy. And when installed, it kind of sandwiches the pressure plate between those two snap rings, holds it in place. Like I said, then you've got a, a surface for your underdrive clutches as well as the uh, overdrive clutches. Now, <clears throat> underdrive clutches down here in the bottom. Get those out. Got a whole stack of those. We could just flip the drum over and slam it. Starting at the top there, you can see they're pretty dark. Indicates heat, slippage. And then of course, it gets kind of lighter color, tan color on the bottom there where they were not slipping or getting this hot. One note on the uh, 68 RFE, and these are different because if you look on this side, you've got friction material and steel on the backside. So they're a single-sided friction. So instead of a friction material that we would see in a normal clutch pack or a lot of other transmissions, friction on this side, friction on this side, it's actually steel. So these are directional, obviously, and they all have to face with that friction material facing up steel plate facing down. That's unique to the uh, 68 RFE. The rest of the RFEs did not use that setup. Okay, once again, if you guys show an interest in us, want to do a build video on this, be happy to do it. It's a very popular trans and there are a lot of aftermarket things we can use on this to uh, beef it up, make it stronger for all you tuners that uh, run the horsepower and the torque up on your rigs. All right, so we're gonna flip this back around, get our valve body off before we go any further. And the valve body is just the eight millimeter bolts. I think there's uh, six of them or something, if I remember correctly. Those are the ones you need to remove to uh, get the valve body off of here. They're just kind of scattered around a little bit. All of the torques are very similar to the One's in the pump, not necessarily just to get the pump or valve body removed. Those will be when we go to split the uh, those units later on. So I think we've got them all. Um, might need a little screwdriver behind it. Shouldn't be a real, real tight fit. Pretty much will just slip right off of there. Let that lifts off. <clears throat> valve body itself has what's known as a solenoid pack or solenoid body that has all the shift solenoids, governor solenoid, everything on it. Side note on this, be aware of these little three rubber seals 
whenever service in your valve body, as far as any work doing the overhaul, these seals do get replaced. They do collapse a little bit and we do want to replace those. Those do come in, in the kit for us. That helps seal the oil passages from the valve body to the case and to the components down inside here. So the uh, auxiliary filter or lube filter was loose enough for me to get off. Sometimes you have to get those off with an oil filter wrench, but it looks like you're kind of a conventional oil filter. And that's got a plastic adapter, thread adapter on there. So to continue on our disassembly, we've got a center support right here. And it's got two snap rings, one on top, one on bottom, very similar to what they did in one of the drums. We'll flip it around, we'll get that uh, large tapered snap ring out and continue disassembly here. While we're flipping the case around here, we've got our park gear that's funny sliding off the back. That's when we had to remove the uh, snap ring from. Finally wants to, to come off of there. That is not directional, by the way. Can go on either, either direction. And another thing, we've got a line pressure sensor or transducer in the back of the case. Not necessary to have to remove that to get the transmission apart. Looks like one of your speed sensors pretty much, but it provides a uh, different function as far as line pressure and the transmission itself. That just simply bolts in the back of the case there. Also, very high failure rate on that uh, sensor. That automatic uh, gets replaced every time on our rebuilds. Okay, working on our center support snap ring here. It's kind of a heavy guy and he's tapered. So we've got to work him up out of the case there. I got that started anyway. Whatever combination of screwdrivers. It's gonna take a little bit of work on this guy because he is kind of beefy. What I do is just go to the next notch in the case each time if I can and get right behind it with your screwdriver. I'm pulling out the whole time on that snap ring with my hand, keeping tension on it. There we go. Like I said, that's a fat guy. He's uh, tapered, tapered goes up, flat side goes down against the uh, um, center support. And normally on this, just as a side note, we'd cover it during assembly, but you would try and leave the gap here towards the bottom or towards the uh, valve body itself so it does not interfere with the valve body when it's bolted to the case. So the center support itself should pretty much just slide right out. It will get caught in the snap ring groove because those big heavy snap rings tend to kind of work on that groove a little bit and, and kind of mess them up. So what I do is once again, we're gonna use a specialty tool, good old vice grip. And what I usually do is try and get in here and grab a hold one of these ribs on the center support somewhere, if I can, if I can get the pliers in there and clamp it down and use that as a handle to get a hold of that guy and try and work him out of the case. It's not really a lot to grab with your fingers or a pick or anything. So that guy just without forcing it too hard and that slides right out of there for you. Makes it a little bit easier, I think than trying to fight it with picks or something to hook behind it. Doesn't do any damage to the support there. It's not a critical area or anything. That houses a set of clutches here, little guys here in the middle, as well as a piston. And this is the guy I mentioned. This is where your valve body sits right here. Those two seals actually ride directly against that housing once it's in the unit provides that seal between the valve body and that center support. That's why I mentioned those seals before. All right, put that center support aside. We've got a large set of clutches here around the outside of the case. Another snap ring, as I mentioned before, which was underneath the center support. 
lighter duty, skinny little guy. Flat, it's not directional. That's what the center support sets against once it's resting in the case itself. Now we've got more clutches to remove as well as part of a clutch hub and a planetary. So what we can do here is grab this guy, pull him straight out. That was your clutch hub for your little set of clutches and the center support as well as the sun gear and the spline here to hook to one of the clutch hubs itself. And then we've got another planetary here coming out. One of the thrust bearings fell through that rides here. That's what that would look like assembled. Another sun gear on the back of that planetary. Now we we'll get a hold of this set of clutches here that's in the case. Slide those out. One more in there. Another one down here on the bottom, which is actually going to be our thick plate or pressure plate. There we go. And that completes that clutch pack. Another planetary assembly down here. This case. Yeah. And there is our output shaft where our park gear slid over before our snap ring that we took off. That allowed us to remove all this from the back of the case. Another thrust bearing on the back. And another set of clutches all the way back in the bottom of the case down here. And that clutch pack, that clutch drum is held in by a snap ring. So once again, chasing another snap ring, bottom of the case. If we can find some place to get in behind it. And just like the other ones, I pull out on the end of it, work the screwdriver around in each of the gap, if you can. There we go. And that's another tapered snap ring. Taper faces up on that. And we reach down in here and try and grab this last clutch pack. Slide that out. Got our low reverse set of clutches back here, contained in the drum, as well as a one-way clutch in the center of it right here. And that, yes, does have a, I can find it, another area for a seal to ride against. That would be the third seal that's in the base of the valve body, seals directly against that, that drum. That gets us pretty well disassembled as far as the case goes. This show is a ton of hours to produce and we could use your support. You can learn more by checking out the video description down below. So we just got done going through the uh, Dodge slash Chrysler 68 RFE teardown video. Naturally, in the near future, we're gonna dedicate a video to the inspection of said unit. So if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell too so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Once again, my name's Robert and I will see you next time.